there's something about a new year. Like, there's all this pressure that comes with it, right? Like, we feel like we should have all this stuff planned for a new year. You know, and the thing is, January 1st is just another day. Like, seriously, it is just another day. But there is such a power in the expectation that it brings. And we do. We start to make these plans. We, we sign up for gym memberships. You know, I've seen some people who are like, oh, gosh, here come the resolutioners. You know, on social media, like, they're like, you're going to invade, and it's going to be crowded for the first two weeks, and it's going to suck to be at the gym because I've been here every day for the last year. And then I see something that's way more encouraging, like, yes, there are going to be the, the resolutioners there. Get over yourself and make this a place for them, too. And I think sometimes we need that attitude in life as well. Like, we, we get, like, kind of grumpy and bitter with people that seem to invade our space, and let, yet there is still room for people. And we need to make some room for people. We need to make some room for ourselves. But there is. There, we do have these expectations. And, and even if we don't make resolutions, they're kind of, they're out there. You know, you may go, well, maybe. Maybe I should. You know, maybe I should sign up for gym membership. Maybe I should sign up for new, more Weight Watchers. You know, sign up for online dating so that I can have a date by Valentine's Day and maybe a proposal by Thanksgiving. Um, we fixate on the future. And we move so fast into it that we don't even take time to pause and be where we are, let alone look where we've been. And there is such a power in looking back, not to allow the past to hold us or define us. You know, we are people who live in grace, meaning that our past does not define us, Christ does. But there is a power in knowing where we have come from, in learning from the experiences that we have had in order to offer that to others. I say this all the time to you, that we are blessed to be a blessing. We are given these experiences sometimes or go through them, whether they are good or bad, in order to offer something to someone else. We are blessed to be a blessing. And so often we don't take time to recognize what the blessings we have to offer others. Because sometimes that blessing is empathy. Sometimes that blessing is compassion because we know how hard that is, what they're going through. And we resist taking time to pause and reflect. And part of it is just the demands of life, you know, family, work, um, social obligations. Like, they pull at us and they fill our calendar so quickly that it leaves very little time for us to pause and reflect, that we have to fight for that. And this constant busyness really does interfere with that. But we also avoid it, I think, sometimes because we don't like to be uncomfortable. You know, sitting down and kind of looking at yourself and looking at your life can make you a little uncomfortable because you have to take note of the things that maybe didn't go so well, some places that are um, hard and painful and sad. And we avoid that. And then we have this lovely distraction of living in a digital age where we have at our fingertips constant distraction and entertainment that allows us to really avoid feeling uncomfortable. We can just numb out with a few YouTube videos, go through some reels. You know, my husband calls it getting caught in the loop. <laughs> you know, he's like, I went to look at this one video and then suddenly it's two hours later. Um, and I don't know what I've watched, but the time is gone. And so all of these things interfere with us being able to take time and reflect on our lives. But there is such a power in it, especially in our faith, because it allows us to, one, know ourselves and know places where maybe we are growing or need to grow. It's kind of like looking in the mirror. Know what you look like. You know, know, know what's going on. Know what is in your life, what has come and what has gone. 
And it also offers us an opportunity to deepen our connection, not only with ourselves, but with God. Because we start to see where he is in our lives. And that we also have an opportunity when we pause and think about what has happened, where we have been, where we are going even, is to kind of learn from life. Is to start to notice maybe some patterns. You know, sometimes we joke, oh, yeah, she's definitely got a type. You know, meaning that she continues to date the same kind of guy and it ends up the same way every time. You know, that they're not going to commit. But she keeps hoping that they will. And so often in our lives, we don't notice those patterns because we don't take the time to stop. And, and that's not just kind of relationally. It can happen in our work lives. It can happen in our faith practice as well. Why aren't I growing? Well, you're not doing anything different. But we don't take the time to see what's really going on. And we can also take time and reflection to see our relationship with God. It's all about awareness and sometimes even noticing things that would have just passed us by. So there is a power in reflection and I want us to take some time this morning to reflect, to look back, to actually think, and maybe go, go to some hard places. And so this morning, I want to start with the idea of, of grief. And, you know, the, the power in this is that grief is a hard thing for us, especially as Americans. You know, we avoid sadness at all costs. And... There is a beautiful power, though, in grieving because it means that we experienced something that meant something. And I want us to take some time this morning. Um, you have paper on your tables. You have cards as well, index cards. You are welcome to use any of those at any point in the service to, to help facilitate this. And I want us to take a moment in the beginning here is to name some hard moments for you from 2023. Maybe there was some loss, maybe a loss of a loved one, maybe a difficult season that you went through. Maybe you're still in it even. Maybe something ended that was really good. Like maybe there was a graduation, but there's still some loss in it. I think back to like high school, like I was glad to be done. <laughs> I was way glad to be done. But there were also some, some moments of loss of, of that time with friends that was regularly structured into my day that was no longer there. So there's some bittersweetness to sometimes our, our reflections. Maybe you've experienced an ongoing frustration that has been just difficult for you all year long. Places maybe where you feel that you failed we don't take enough time with grief to name the hardships, to name the hard places, because we want to forget them, right? They're hard. They're painful. They hurt. Now, I, I have a fractured uh, fibula, and it has been painful to, to walk on it, and yet it is in the walking on it that the healing happens. Now, yes, I have had a, a boot and a brace, but I've had to engage with the pain in order to experience healing. And that is what grief allows us to do. So yes, I want us to get uncomfortable with our grief, our sadness. And the thing is that our scripture is filled, especially in the Psalms, is filled with emotion, particularly lament and grief and sadness. And it's a powerful means of connecting with ourselves and God. It allows us to really know what we value because we recognize the power and the loss and the absence. And the thing is that God is near us in our grief. This is a verse from scripture that I fully believe is ingrained in my heart because I go to it so often. It comes to us from Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So often in our grief and our sadness, we feel alone, and yet we are not, because God is with us. 
God is, is present to us. It is, he's, he's saying, I see you. I hear you, even when it feels like nobody else does. I see you, and I'm with you. And, and this, in this world where we, we have these curated pictures, images that we share with everybody on social media, this reminds us that all is not as it seems. And it's okay to feel the pain, to let it out, because God is there. God is with you. He hears every cry. He sees every tear. He even feels it in the silence with you. So when grief hits and it feels like no one understands, I lean into this verse knowing that God is near when my heart is broken, that when my spirit is crushed, he is with me, present. So in these messy, very real lives that we live and sometimes never share fully, I want you to take a moment and share it fully with God, to name those hard places, to name it unfiltered, unedited, Write them on those cards. Write them on the, the paper on your tables. Take a few moment, moments to sit with the hard stuff. Name three hardships, hard moments for you from this last year. of the clouds that may loom above because you're much greater than my pain you who made a way for me by suffering your destiny so tell me what's a little
God Almighty. Yes, Lord God Almighty. how that song ends in praise but starts with grief it starts with pain and acknowledgement of pain and when we take time to grieve to feel the big stuff and we take that grief in particular to God there can be powerful healing and in that healing we find moments to express gratitude Gratitude is, is a particularly powerful thing in our world. And so often we, we don't dig into it very richly because gratitude can build within us resilience and grit. And the interesting thing to me is that I read to you a piece from Psalm 34. It came to, you, came to us from verse 6, 18. Well, verse 3 of that psalm starts with this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, meaning lift his name up, praise him, and let us exalt his name together. There is this idea in scripture that we glorify God, meaning we celebrate God. We cheer for God in a way. And in the whirlwind of our lives, you know, the busyness, the messiness, where we have a lot of FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, and comparison is a powerful enemy to our joy. This verse really invites us to turn our attention to points of thankfulness, celebrating the goodness of God in a world that wants to push us so often to focus on what is lacking, what we don't have, than what we do have, to celebrate what we have every day. And we love to kind of focus on the highlights. You know, I'm watching friends do this with kind of their year in review highlights. And I think that is powerful and wonderful, but they seem to just pick the good moments. But there's a lot of moments in between. Where is the highlight reel of all the good, the bad, the ugly, and bringing it all to God? Gratitude, maybe not for the hardship, but for God bringing you through it. Gratitude for his presence in the midst of heartache. For the friendships that you have that have sustained you throughout a rough time. Gratitude, again, brings resilience, embeds within us grit that sustains us for future experiences. As well as allows us to better experience joy and connection. So I want us to take a few moments this morning to name points of celebration, points of joy for you from this last year. Now, some of you may be in a hard place right now. You may be going, I need, to, <laughs> I need 2024 right now because 2023 needs to be over. Take a breath. It's going to be all right. Invite God to maybe show you where there were points of celebration, points to give thanks for in the midst of hardship. Some of us have things to celebrate. Some of us have moments just to pause and say, thank you, God. So take a few moments and name three places of joy, celebration, expressing 
your gratitude. Search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run the things we know that just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. In the midst of grief and gratitude exists God's grace. And grace is what sustains us and invites us into full relationship with God and others. As Christ followers, we trust that grace is enough. We trust that grace will span the gap so that we don't have to be enough because God is more than enough. Grace serves as this foundation of trust for us as believers, recognizing that this unmerited favor that is given to us by God freely empowers us to move through this life, to move through the grief with gratitude and to respond to his boundless love with trust and guidance for our lives. 
in Psalms, there are so many emotions expressed. And this one that comes to us from Psalm 28, verse 7, is about what it is to lean into God in good and bad. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts him. I was helped. My heart rejoiced. And I thanked him with my song. To think about how we respond to grace is about trust. And these words that come to us from this writer thousands of years ago resonate with the grace that sustains us through life's challenges and changes. And in the midst of the chaos of modern life, grace can be an anchor can be the anchor for us. It is unearned strength that surprises us and empowers us to navigate the uncertainties and builds within us the resilience and hope for the future. That when we embrace God's grace for us, we can have peace even in the midst of the storm. And that even despite our flaws, there is a force at work in our lives that is bigger than us, bigger than the storms we are going through. This force of God that loves us so deeply. And so in this last year, I want us to take a moment and look back and think about a place maybe where one place that you learn that you can trust God, something that you can trust God with. Maybe you're not at the point where you can trust God with everything. That's okay. This is a process. This is, this is about engaging with God and learning to, to love and know that he is for us and with us. But where are those places maybe in this last year that you go, yeah, God showed up and I trust that he'll show up again. Maybe it was with regards to your health. Maybe it was with relationships. Maybe it was that you can do this job. You can do it with his strength. Name a place. Name a thing that you learn that you can trust God with in this last year. Take a moment. And, and it, it may not come to you immediately. It's okay. This isn't quick work. This is why we don't do it <laughs> so often. is because it requires us to sit and pause and think and invite God maybe into this. God, where, where have I learned to trust you in this last year? Show me. Show me, no matter how big or small it is. Allow me to name it and give thanks for it. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. And I'll sing again You are so good to me You heal my broken heart You are my Father in heaven You are so good to me You heal my broken heart Right. 
caught up on the clouds you lead me to the truth you are the spirit inside of me right up on the clouds you lead me to the truth you are the spirit inside of me you are beautiful my sweet sweet song That was me. Let's start over again. As we look to a new year, and like we talked about a little bit earlier, there's a lot of energy that comes into a new year, right? New year, new you. And I don't want you to sit here and feel like you have to create a laundry list of resolutions. You don't need to. But I do want us to look to this next year as an invitation to ask, where do I want God to show up in 2024? Where do I need the presence of God? Where do I need to experience God in this next year? There may be a variety of areas in your life that you need this, but name one. Name one. Where do you want God to show up in 2024? Is it in your marriage? Is it in your work? It is, it, is it in your classes, your school, your friendships, your family? Where do you need to experience God's presence most in 2024? Take a deep breath and, and pause on that to name it, to write it down. To say, God, I, I need you in this relationship. God, I need you in my health. I need you in this place of, of scariness for me. I need you here the most. Invite him into that today. 
name. Where do you need God to show up for you in 2024? Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, give me Jesus. As we prepare for this new year, I want to invite you to consider a very simple practice to guide you. Consider this an invitation. I'm not going to check you for homework or anything. But I challenge you in this coming year to take time daily to read the book of Proverbs. There are 31 Proverbs, 31 days in January. It seemed to work. We've spent time this morning in Psalms, which is very emotional and emotive. And that's not to say that Proverbs isn't, but Proverbs is known for being a guide for practical wisdom and faithful living. That its goal was always to kind of impart discernment, discipline, and understanding. And it addresses so many various aspects of life relationships, work, our words, our character. Purpose was to equip individuals with wisdom for faithful living and to lead the readers to a God-centered 
relationship and a life that flourished in that faith. Now, if you choose to accept this mission for January, I do want to give you just a little nugget. Because within Proverbs, this, this phrase, fear the Lord, fear of the Lord. And it doesn't mean what it sounds like it means. This is the thing about reading scripture is sometimes we have to sit with it a little bit longer, which makes us a little worry, a little resistant of doing so. But fear of the Lord does not mean that we have terror or dread of God, but rather that there is this deep, deep reverence for who God is, this awe for God, a respect that acknowledges his holiness, his sovereignty, his power and authority over all creation. So I, I wanted to give you that if you choose to do this, because I know that that can sometimes cause us to stumble as we read and reflect on these words. But I believe that if you take time in the next month to do this, it will invite you to reflect regularly. That the power in reflection happens when it is a habit. And this is, this is the power of it. But the idea that there are simple choices that we make that become our actions. And our actions become our habits. And our habits become our lives. So in a new year, I invite you not to have a resolution, but maybe to make a simple choice that becomes an action that then can become a habit that becomes your life. I want you to do this, not because I get any extra points for you reading scripture, but because I believe it will offer you a moment daily to reflect, to maybe take those things that you wrote on that card or the table and make them a part of your daily living to maybe make that place that you named where you got need God to show up in this next year, a prayer that you offer up every day. And so I want you to, to consider starting this practice tomorrow of reading through Proverbs. And to help you with this, we've created a very simple text devotional. So all you have to do is sign up, and then it comes to you every day. A simple text that has one of the verses from that proverb for the day, as well as a point for reflection or a thought, and a possible call to action. And to do this, to simply sign up to receive these daily devotional texts, just text the word New Year to our text number, which is 833-332-8915. Just text the word New Year words I want this to be an opportunity for you to look to the new year with hope with anticipation not with heavy expectation that everything has to be different and new but that we have the opportunity to make simple choices that become actions that become our habits, because it is our habits that make us. I hope that this becomes an opportunity for you to pause regularly, to maybe begin a new habit in a new year that fills your soul, that allows those places of hurt to become places of healing. that places where we need more of God, we start to see and acknowledge that he is already there. He is in the midst of the storm with us. So we're going to take a few moments, and I invite you to, you know, you're welcome to take out your smartphone, type that number in, scan the QR code on the welcome card. It'll do the same thing. Text in New Year so that you can begin tomorrow with a fresh perspective on the wisdom of God, allowing 
as one of my professors would say, not so much for us to read scripture, but for scripture to read us. The idea that when we reflect, we are truly looking at who we are and who God is. And allowing ourselves to recognize where God will move in and through us and sometimes in spite of us. Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? For shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus And his love is strong And his grace is free And the good news is I know that he can do for you What he's done for me Yeah, let me tell you about my Jesus Let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah
My friends, my prayer for us in this new year is that we walk with God, that we seek him, that we seek to live an everyday faith that reflects a love for God and a love for others. Now, that can take a variety of forms, and it is as unique as each of us is unique. But the call is the same, to love God and love others. How will we do that in a new year? Every day. That it doesn't have to be about a big, over-the-top plan, but simple choices that lead to actions that become habits, that become our lives.